So the family has a 400 year old legacy. Great grandfather was in the Indian judiciary. Father was an IIT engineer. He himself was a textile engineer. Son started with hospitality, moved into finance and now is into private equity. Uh, nobody in the family had ever been in business. Uh, and if you go back about a decade and a half, he was the executive director for a major sports and clothing brand here in India. We will reveal the name later. Uh, and he left it all behind. And he said, I want to get into business. Rahul, when you look at all of this, how does it feel? I think content is the word that comes to my mind. Definitely, uh, let's say having failed would have been less of a pain than actually not being able to do this. So let's say at the age of whatever, you kind of put your uh, socks up and shoes up and you basically look at it. What have you achieved in life? And I think if you've not done this, that would have been a bigger regret for me. Yeah, but no legacy of a family business, yeah. right? And business is usually associated with only risks. Sure. And especially in the Indian context is business and you know, you'd rather be comfortable, let's say, and you were with Reebok India yeah. at that point in time and pretty much uh, the Superman in India. Yeah. But you decided to leave it all behind to start your business. I want to go into that transition in your mind. Sure. Uh, because I'm sure at that point in time, let's say 2007, 24, 18 years ago, you yes. would have been in your late 30s. Yes. So that was 36 yeah. uh, age. And I would say that's the time you uh, are going to take la uh, larger decisions because my dad had just got retired. They were settling in. Uh, son was six years old, uh, well settled in a school. We had moved to Gurgaon in 1996. So we had already been in Gurgaon for 10 years. So I think that's the time when you kind of start to settle in. And at that time, it was a situation where within the company, because it was bought over by another large company, I would have been transferred outside India mm. because they said you would reach your peak. And from here, the only, you know, let's say rise up is to go outside. And uh, for some reason, uh, I would say, let's say when you're much younger, you take that step. I didn't want to take it. And uh, we decided as a family that let's stay put, let's enjoy our life in our own way. And we didn't realize that a business would actually, so it kind of came in naturally that, you know, I think doing on your own would be easier. And one of the quotes which came because when I was like kind of when I quit and I didn't know what to do, there was a kind of a sabbatical period where you're like kind of figuring out, should I go and get a job within India? Outside India was already available. What should I do? And then came in an email. I still remember the quote and this, there was no WhatsApp those days. So an email came in from a, from a school buddy and he says, you know, I've known you forever and uh, ships are safe in the harbor, but that's not True. what ships are made for. True. It's and that actually just boom, it just hit me hard. And I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just start sailing. And that's what happened. And I think uh, what you've done is something that you do better. And uh, I was running a golf business also, a golf and clothing business within the whole Reebok. And I got the rights for Greg Norman, which mm. is a very famous golfer who's got various different uh, enterprise. Uh, and I basically started doing, okay, well, I'm going to make golf courses for you in India. I will do your clothing from here. And I took the rights for that license. Mm. I, and for five years, I was doing that. And I was very happy. Uh, meeting people and actually making golf a larger sport. Yeah. Uh, and that was because, was it a natural extension from your Reebok state yeah, because, into sports yes, and sports, sports management? Sports I knew and this was sports clothing. Uh, and also, you know, when you're in a sportswear company for a long time, you see sports as a life, literally it just becomes your life. And I realized that that's what, and being in Gurgaon, and if you recall Gurgaon in those years, the golf has just kind of really sure. progressed and everybody or me in the corporate world or otherwise and friends and said, I want to play golf. There was everybody wanted to play golf, but you just can't go to the course and start playing. And I thought, and that's the time I realized that there's no place you could go try playing golf or you could basically go and buy anything hmm. for golf. You had all the brands, you had to ship it inside when you were traveling out, you had to carry those big bags. Why can't we all do this? And in Reebok, I'd been a retailer too, because you know, Reebok had so many stores. So I knew there's retail, you know what, and retail is just booming. There's no online at that stage. There's nothing called e-commerce, right? And I thought the physical store, and that's why we created something. So while I'm doing the background part, I created something called the Golf Works, which is, which is India's largest golfing facility. 
and it was 50,000 square foot. You could come and play golf, you could try, you could, and we had bar inside, we have a cafe, we have a restaurant, the whole works. But we had about 35 brands that you could come and physically see. And it was like a shop and shop for all the golf brands and people loved it. If you had the luxury of time today and if you had to kind of look back, do you think that venture was a little too early? Yeah. And had it been in 2024, it would have been, uh, the outcome would have been different. So, so Do you the, ever so, think about it? Yeah. So, so whenever anything fails, a lot of people say it's before time. So that's being like, you know, failures can happen for many reasons. But the, the easy way of saying is, yeah, this happened before time. Uh, I would say time is not really important from that perspective because whether you would have done it then, uh, golf has been there forever, right? It's all about, uh, sometimes you, you don't have to look at the demand uh, to create a supply. And I always believe that sometimes you create the supply. Mm. And, you know, when we come to the beer cafe, that's one thing I want to tell mm. you that you have to sometimes create that supply. I got it. And, you know, demand will follow. And I think that was the reason. But the failure for that was many other reasons. Uh, partner dispute, you know, mm. I had an Aussie mm. partner, mm. didn't work out. We had financial issues because we were running a very large ship with, you know, very... I didn't know anything about business from that perspective. You know, I didn't know how hospitality works, how the margins. I had no idea. Uh, uh, literally, it was more of a passion project. And passion projects can sometimes uh, not work. No, I, I get the failure yeah. option. I'm sure they, they could have been internal disputes. I was more uh, even kind of talking about the fact that Gurgaon was, I think, only about a decade old in yeah. terms of its urbanization. Yeah, true, true. India at that point in time, if I'm not mistaken, was about a trillion and a half sure. dollar economy. Sure, sure. There was hardly any wealth true. or the concentration of wealth was true. even few true. In, in the... Uh, uh, the first uh, decimal and of the population. You're right. right, and I think also what's happened is no, I don't look at the people. So the golf was being played by armed forces. People, Correct. Okay? They literally don't play it for luxury. They play it to you know kind yeah. of use the time, and that's their uh, you know that's their way of getting out. But more importantly, they were also not consumers. Mm. They already have the club in India at that time. I remember there were 150 clubs, 100 were owned by the armed forces, and yeah. 50 were there. Yeah. There was only one one public course, which is Lado Sarai. Can you yeah. imagine? In India, I had only one public course and the others were private, so you had to be members yeah. and all that. So, yes, it was a, it's always been a luxury mm. sport and a little more. But today what's happened is, one, obviously, uh, very good golf. Uh, India has great golf players. So, that's mm. one. Mm. So, overall, you know, you see that um, uh, India across the world. The other thing what's happened is that the new generation is actually playing. So, True. we would play to retire. My father started True. playing. As a game. leisure sport. He, yeah. My father started playing golf. He was playing every day. He became literally mm. like a, he was a champ in his own way. Became a single handicap. He was playing every day. Yeah. Now that is post his retirement after running yeah. his. Now today, I have seen people at fourteen or fifteen wanting to start playing golf. Mm. I think that's the big difference. You're, so you're from that right. timing perspective, I would say yes, uh, that young consumer exists today. And yeah. today it would have been more successful than it is. So and, and you had some excellent role models, both uh, men and women, yeah. at that point in time. Sure. Jyoti Randhawa on one yeah. side. Yeah. I'm sure there were. They were, no, other, they were so we had really good people and they would come to us. Yeah. We had a lot of collaboration with them. We did a lot of work with mm. them. But like I said, yes, more people are playing today uh, than ever. Yeah. And the same thing yeah. then actually pivoted into the beer business where today the beer is being consumed uh, far more than what it was being consumed earlier in terms of the, the kind of beer. I'm yeah. Saying. yeah. So cloth, firstly, textile engineer. Yeah. Still right? there, I'm trying yes. to connect the dots here. Yeah. Textile engineer, sports. Yes. Sports management. Yeah. Leave it all behind yeah. and you say, you know what, let me get into the F&B space yeah. and more in the beverage yeah. and space. Yeah. Where did this stem from? Sorry, it, it there stemmed, has to be some backstory no, it, to it. it. Stemmed, uh, the backstory is very similar. We stemmed from what I would observe because we were getting uh, a lot of people. So we would get close to about four to 5,000 people coming in every month into this place, which is open to public. And it was a place you could come, you could play, you can have a great time. Uh, we had a lot of expat communities because expat communities mm. for them, uh, post office hours mm. in India you can't play night golf mm. okay? there's only one place which I had only in summer months mm. and stuff mm. so we could mm. not play night golf so this is a place they could come after their work and stuff but one of the things I realized is we would do a lot of toonies and, mm. our toon and we put together we had a whole management program where we would basically get people in and corporates to come and play and at the last minute a lot of people would actually say oh I've got a backache I'm not feeling well I think sports was not in their mind mm. but wherever we did a whiskey night or a single malt, you know, or we did a cigar, we would see people actually saying, can I get two more? Can I get two? And I just mm. realized that socializing is inescapable. It's something that 
everybody looks at khana pina is something that comes mm. first in their mind mm. have a great time sports probably second it might feel good to be in sports but i think i started realizing that maybe culture is also it's, it's, uh, uh, india is like that it is right? like that yeah. and going out meant a luxury in itself right going out to have a great time with my friends and there was no delivery at that time so mm. we're talking about those days mm. when there's no mm. e-commerce mm. and delivery mm. so we talked about the time where people would go out to kind of True. you know just just get out and de-stress themselves but de-stress can happen in the game of golf but it was happening mainly in the fnb and we started seeing that 80% of our revenues were actually coming from fnb and then i realized this is where i want to be and in this fnb i can't be in the food industry uh, because it's got its own nuances and you have to have that uh, dominos it just kind of started to kind of sell in india mm. there no other mm. big brands mm. things were there starbucks was in the live and all that stuff was happening but mcdonalds was there that was there mcdonald yeah. was there yeah. with vikram and yeah. you know things were happening so i actually went and met these people i met with a couple of people i kind of met with them and i actually started to interact with them and i started to realize that yes, yes this is an industry which is interesting but i don't want to be in food i would take the the beverage route and the beverage route has a hot and cold simple i said i'm not going to be in the hot uh, that time the chai guys had not come but starbucks yeah, was about to yeah, set up yeah. there was obviously some brands i said i'll go cold now cold has only two things you have alcohol or non alcoholic mm. i don't want to be in the juice business mm. because i had some friends who had done juice mm. and and failed mm. miserably because mm. while we talk healthy we don't drink healthy and from <laughs> that perspective i just realized let it be uh, the boozy business and again in that it's very simple let's can't do wine it's a pretty difficult business to be in india from that perspective it's only in selected places uh, i don't want to be in brown spirits and white and so let it be beer and that's how it happened so it was like basically just like when you sit across and you start to but even at that point in time yeah. especially again you go back to your reebok days yeah. right yeah you must have access to a lot of data true well, even I'm, during I'm reebok right you're a data, data person right yeah, i'm a total data person yes and let's say when you when you came into the beer business yeah. um correct me if i'm wrong yeah. if i if if for the audience just give an insight if the spirits business yeah. that means the whiskies yeah. the rums yeah. the vodkas what is the total uh, uh, number of million cases uh, yeah. we produce here in india so so whatever we produce we consume because there is no Got let's it. say inventory of that there is only rolling inventory and we we not a big exporter we are a 40 50 billion dollar market in india no. when you talk at uh, binance spirits actually more so it depends on how you see the market okay uh, the way to see the market is there is off premise on premise so that's on premise will sell at a higher price off premise so the way we look at it if you look at the market from a point of the brewery or distillery which is the turnover hmm. of that that will be about 1/4 of the uh, the street price got it so the way you look at the industry you look at the street price street price means what you go to a vent so it. india has 100000 places to go and buy got it 15000 are on premise where you go and get served and 85000 are off premise where you go and buy so it's got like it. so the tertiary the takeaways whatever every, you every want every retail possible so either you can be off premise on premise that's how 100000 places technically very small business from that perspective from a number of number of presentation yeah. uh ho chi minh city has 70000 yeah. you know beijing has 250000 so yeah. can't even imagine what we're talking about but having said that the business in india the the spirits business is really large so from a volume perspective we are one of the largest in the world because we sell about 450 million cases of, of 9 liters because yeah. spirits are 9 liter cases and we sell right now 400 million liter 400 million cases of beer So it's technically about fifty-five, forty-five in terms of volume, but value-wise, it's eighty-five, fifty because, because yeah, spirit uh, is much more. Yeah, nine spirit, nine yeah. nine liter uh, case would be uh, a different for you know yeah. two three thousand yeah. rupees, whereas a beer at that stage would be six hundred, seven hundred rupees a case. I'm talking manufacturing. Uh, but business. it's very surprising. Yeah. Uh, again, as world, a consumer, the other way around. In the world, it's the, it's the other way around. It's completely right? opposite, and especially in India, yeah. it's a tropical country. Yeah. It should be. beer so, friendly yeah it should be yeah, beer friendly yeah. so in your opinion it's assessment a, why it, is it like it's this? only one thing because most of people and i'm now again talking about 82% of beer is also a strong beer now that's something that you don't consume i don't consume this is a beer we you never seen also this is beer consumed in the hinterland in, in the in the larger bharat because it's about bang for your buck so anybody who wants alc- to consume alcohol or get alcohol, high quickly yeah so it's bang for your buck so whether a spirit will give him or now the problem is the taxation is not done on the alcohol content in oh. india taxation is done on volume so while a spirit will have 40% alcohol abv a uh, beer has 5% both would be taxed in a similar manner mm. whereas the 5% actually mm. we yeah. are taxing 95% water for it true now because of that reason for the same amount of alcohol inside you you would be able to pay a much smaller price for the uh, spirits whether mm. it's uh, mm. country liquor for example 
country liquor is a very big market. Sixty percent of the business is still country liquor. Country and, liquor and, and I'm assuming and that will no, be another four hundred million that's cases. Crazy. And, yeah, and then there is nothing called country beer. Got it. There's only beer, right? There's no country liquor or you know like what we call IMF. But is there an estimate on the country liquor in India? Yeah, it's, it's everything in India is legit in terms of alcohol. There is people who make hooch is, is another story, but everything in India is all legit and numbers. And what would be the number of cases of country liquor? In so India? country liquor. So if there's 400 million cases, country liquor is actually another 500, 600 million Jesus cases. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. Well, what we're talking about 400 million cases and it's only because of the price point right it's because it is, it the is, way it India is for the is. mass it is what everybody let's say somebody who's a labor who's just a daily laborer would be has to yeah. home, he has to get his yeah. uh, you know and uh, so but beer from that perspective while volume wise let's say equivalent to spirits but like value wise it completely changes the other thing about beer in itself has been that beer has always been toward more testosterone more let me do it but that is what's weird today now that the taste is taking over testosterone and i think that is a big shift we've seen again this is because of the newer generation today the millennial and the gen z both are consuming beers and they see another aspect they see they want to drink better they don't want to drink more you know so i think there's been a huge generation like i can also tell you i give you my story about beer obviously uh, legal speak i shouldn't be at that stage because in rajasthan 18 Mm. Uh, Rajasthan, thankfully, is eighteen. I don't know. It's for beer is eighteen. For everything is eighteen. Rajasthan, yeah, everything is eighteen. So we can, and what about Haryana? Uh, Haryana is twenty-one now, and okay. Delhi is twenty-five for everything. Wow. Yeah, because in, in Rajasthan we marry at fourteen, so you can you know, obviously. Got it. So, so just, basically, in Delhi, everyone is in violation. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of them would be. But when it comes to Rajasthan, I remember my first beer was sixteen. Okay, it was a it was a large beer called Thunderbolt at that time, strong beer, not not even cold, and you're having this beer and you're just kind of sipping it and like. What the hell is this? Why would anybody have this? Because that is how I hmm. had my first. You got year. inducted into this in, uh, in a in an environment which was like hmm. in a hurry. Hmm. My son comes in, and you know, obviously by then a beer cafe is already there, and I'm like telling him that beer is like having a first kiss. It's like had to be had in the right manner, hmm. right glassware, right pour, True. right way of doing it. And so his induction to beer has been completely different than what I've been in. Hmm. So he would know more beer than I would as a consumer hmm. than I would have ever imagined. Today, I'm the business, so obviously hmm. I, I know it. But that is what's happening. People know the difference in beer. People are doing it. Huge amount of women folk drinking beer, which would never happen in those days. Beer was bitter. Hmm. Beer was had with shandy, you know, hmm. add limka to it. You know, you would have seen those days. Completely changed. But was the proliferation of, let's say, the large distilleries in Bangalore, in the early 2000, Brewery did it said. help? Yeah, yeah. So Bangalore was the first city uh, in 1991 which allowed a, something called the draft. Hmm. Again, this was a, again they were the both two largest company hmm. even today. UB for uh, let's say beer and USL for, for spirits. spirits. Both were owned by one person. Hmm. Okay, he is from Bangalore. Uh, you know, and he would do whatever it takes. You know, hmm. he was a guy who hmm. basically Got run it. the business in the way he would like to, and uh, he had everything in his hand. So he would actually be before. Like would say he would be high on innovation. Hmm. So everything he did was high on innovation. And he realized that people were drinking draft beers. Hmm. India didn't have it. So he got the government to you hmm. know allow that. So Bangalore became by de facto. And also it was his home turf. It, that was, yeah. It was everything yeah. home. So it became you know the beer city. I still hmm. remember the first time I saw a draft was 1991. And there hmm. were like these pubs in Bangalore. True. True. It's still considered the beer city. Hmm. It is called the beer capital. Sorry. Even today? Even today. Because the most amount of microbreweries. Are in Bangalore. Are in Bangalore. And after and Bangalore, there are seventy-five, would be? and there are twenty-five in making right now. So hundred microbreweries over there. Yeah. So such a small. And city. when you look at a place like Gurgaon, so Gurgaon at, at the peak had gone to forty-five, fifty. Today Got it's it. gone down to about twenty, twenty-five because a lot of other reasons. Got it. Yeah. Mm. But Delhi doesn't have much because the microbrewery policy. So microbreweries again, these are what we call brew pub. You brew on and site, and you sell on site. In India right now, we have about two hundred plus of them, but it's only getting bigger because this culture is getting bigger. Uh, we don't run uh, brew pubs. What we do is obviously we run what we call the cafe format. And I'll mm. talk about it. Mm. And why I believe that this is a better formula than having a large ship. Because I've run a large ship. Mm. And uh, the large ship has an issue. So I was running an aircraft carrier. And an, and an aircraft carrier, let's say, gets hit by a torpedo. It sinks. What I have now is, is smaller boats. And one or two boats can go. Yeah, I don't have a problem. It doesn't hurt me. But tell me, sir. Let me go back again into that entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. You decided to get into a market which even today is very heavily regulated. It's regulated. Completely every regulated. state yeah. is different. You say, right, every PIN code is a culture yeah. code in India. True that. Right. Um, what went into your mind? You know what? Here I had a sporting brand. You know what? I don't need those kind of licenses yeah. because it's, it's clean business. Yeah. Yeah. You can just about enter any state, yeah. open up your retail outlet and you're selling shoes yeah. and clothing yeah. and everything. Yeah. 
but when, even sports for that matter. Sure. But beer was something which, which again, uh, 40, 50, 60 days of the year, I believe are dry days. Yes. Uh, yes. There are so many other so-called taboos sure. associated sure. with sure. Sure. I would say the liquor industry. Yeah. Right. And what fascinated you? So to start with, like I said, I'd done my funnel and I realized that let it be beer, you mm. know. So that I decided that beer is going to be my thing. And that's why when we call it the beer cafe, it was very simple. Mm. We have two evergreen names, both are four-letter words. So I moved from a four-letter word called golf to a four-letter word called beer, <laughs> which attached with another four-letter word called cafe. And there's no other four-letter word left now. But so the beer and cafe in itself are two evergreen model, right? The beer is beer and cafe means what you look at. So what you're sitting in is a cafe. This mm. is how. So that was the rebel or the disruption that mm. we wanted from, mm. a, from a place of... Mm. Uh, let's say where you'll serve people. So you had only two options there. You had these uh, Dinchek, Dinchek kind of nightclubs and high premium places or high fine dining. So you would have to go to hotels. Those are the days I'm talking about 2012. You go to a hotel to actually see high nightlife. You know, you could not, Correct. there was no nightlife, but it was expensive, premium, very pretentious. And then you had these really shady places, Park and Dingy, the permit rooms, the permit rooms, which is still there and yeah. they'll continue to thrive. But there was nothing in the middle. So that's where the disruption. So, so while the beer was the product, how do you serve it was very important to me. And for me, it was, I'm going to serve this in an environment which is very casual. It is unpretentious. Hmm. And the idea here is the line we use it, we call it come as you are. Hmm. Come as you are. And that's the concept. No reservations, no fancy clothing, no nothing. You can do whatever. As long as you're legally allowed hmm. to drink, come in and be actually open to families. And that's why 90% of our outlets are in malls. Hmm. Malls are family places. We don't have community centers in India. Hmm. Hmm. Malls become like the place to go to. Where do you go with your family and children? Where does your help go with you? We allow everybody. I would show you pictures where you have three generations drinking. Hmm. The, the youngest generation is in a pram drinking, you know, milk from a bottle. Hmm. And, you know, and that's okay. We're not going to serve a non-legal drinking age. But we allow it. But tell me something. Do you also take it upon yourself to, let's say, I won't say educate, but uh, influence the wider public that it's a beverage. Yeah. You know, do not associate it with, let's say, alcohol, alcohol per se, because the ABV is about 4, 5, 6% that's depending it. on it. So it is low on alcohol. It is healthier, yeah. for sure. It's also about, it's a refresher. So it's not diuretic. It, it's actually refreshing because it's a fermented beverage. It actually is good for your health. But the cuts. perception is totally different. The perception, overall India would say, okay, I want to get high on it. But where I'm talking about is obviously the larger cities, mm. the metros and stuff where there are travelers, there are people who are, let's say, global. These are Indian globals, uh, mm. global Indians. They know the world, they've seen the world and they want that in their neighborhood. Mm. I'm not going to ever buy a beer and bring it to India mm. or even from a duty free. Mm. You might have the most fancy Japanese whiskey when you go to Tokyo. Mm. You never buy a beer and bring it back mm. because that's not seen True. as, you know, I'm not going to carry right, wine, yeah. you would do yeah. a champagne. You won't collect beer. And beer is the only product in the world which has a shelf life. So the day the beer is made. And there's no provenance as you rightly there's said. There's zero provenance. So yeah. it's not, you know, it could be, okay, my, it's, it was like Budweiser is not American. It came from Budwara village in mm. Czech Republic. So nobody even cares. It became an American beer, mm. right? Okay. So the idea here is that beers have zero provenance. They could be, okay, where they're uh, headquartered. Mm. That becomes like today Kingfisher is mm. a high core Indian mm. beer. It will always remain an Indian beer mm. because it was made here. It has become the most popular beer. From that perspective, what we realize is that because beer has a shelf life, you're sitting on a time bomb and it has to also move from place. You're also got 95% water in it. It's 5% alcohol, right? So you're basically taking liquid moving from here and there. So while it seems like a simple product, commodity, it's actually very difficult to run. Because you're running something which has a shelf life, you're running something which is high on volume, which means and transport costs in India are uh, paradox. While we have the largest amount of road network in the world, the cost of transport is very high. True. The friction cost is very high. So you're looking at it. Then you have to keep it cold, which means you have to have your chillers running 24-7. You just can't add ice to it. True. So you've got that cost running. And utility cost in India is higher than anywhere in the world. True. True. So you're looking at everything going literally wrong. from that. that is why people don't want to be in this business. To be very honest, Somebody said, where is the competition? I said, if they look at this, they said, ah, forget it. Hmm. The other part to it, and this is obviously a dirty secret, not in my case, but a lot of bars would mix their alcohol, hmm. you know, and do things hmm. nasty to it in order to make the margin. Hmm. You can't do that with beer. Hmm. Can you, what will you add to a beer? Hmm. You have to serve it the way it is. So yeah. there is no way. It has to be genuine. It has to be fresh. It has to be cold. And that is what we're obsessed with. And that is why, and it also has to be. So if you go to a bar or a restaurant, 
you will get very few SQs or let's say, uh, meaning you'll get very few options. Yeah. And you'll say, okay, you the guy will tell you, let's say go to a Goa uh, beach and the person will tell you what, you won't even ask him a beer. Yeah. You'll ask him, kya hai? Yeah. give me the coldest. Because you're in that mindset. But let's say you go to a place and you go on for food. Honestly, beer won't matter to you. Mm. You might be a beer person because you just want a light, mm. refresher mm. drink. You'll say, okay, whatever is there. Like last night we went and had some mm. place. There was only one beer. I mm. didn't care about it because mm. I'm going for something else. But when you come to a beer cafe, come on, man, you have to come. You, you, I'm calling it the beer cafe. I, I go to a coffee place. The guy can't say, I just have one coffee. It's not a... So you, could, you, there you, where you could have been a brewer as well, yes. right? But you, beer cafe, the concept that you have beer from all around the world yep. and under one roof under you serve. one roof yeah why this concept yeah because we believe when you call yourself an authority of beer mm. when you say i am for beer mm. and beer for all so we so simple we call it beer for all all for beer that's mm. that's basically mm. our kind of a war cry and from that perspective we are obsessed with beer then mm. and uh, we are just obsessed we said whatever it takes whichever beer comes to india wherever it is made we will put it mm. that's why we also kind of encourage startups in the beer startup the mm. upstarts every beer which has ever been made in india and if it's legally allowed in that state cuz like you said state wide policy we will try and aggregate every possible beer even if it doesn't sell we will still keep it on the shelf so that give it a chance because let people try it and then they start to kind of see okay this beer tastes better and you know so we don't do any deals most of the restaurants will end up doing deals. They'll do exclusive deals because the, the big companies want to be seen in that place. For sure. Uh, so it's more of eyeballs. So right. So they would give them free goods or they will give them marketing dollars. So the dollars. big boys would come in and sweep all We over. don't do that. Yeah. We have zero exclusivity. So you yeah. have a startup guy who apparently, let's say, go a brewing company. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Would you be doing it? 100%. Mm. Manasar, where you are, behind just mm. you, there's a person who makes meads. Yeah. Now meads made out of honey and meads is a new... The day he made the meat in Manesar, the next day I was there and I said, you want to bring it here. Hmm. So the meat came here immediately the next day. We would go and support anybody. So you would be literally the retail incubator for them as well. I right? would do anything for them. Their litmus test have, for their always, business. Always, always. Always. Happen. If they kind of close shop, I can't help that. But I will do whatever it takes to bring them to four. And you started, where was your first beer cafe? So it happened in Gurgaon. Okay. And again, it, uh, you know, the obsession was that, that yes, this is what we will do. And we started the first one in Ambient Small, where the golf works mm. was. So it was mm. easy. I knew them all. I knew the people. I mm. knew, and we started off. And uh, we opened about three or four very quickly. In and Gurgaon itself? Within Gurgaon. And two came in Delhi, two came in Gurgaon. And the idea was that I understand my market. Now I entered another state. Because if you look at NCR, from a liquor perspective, alcohol beverage, it's actually three states. Got it. From Noida to Delhi. So absolutely yeah. right. Three so different states, three different state. regulations. So great. I have learned another state. It's more of the knowledge, mm. like I said. We got into it. And... This is nine months, four outlets, couple of outlets signed, uh, business doing well, market, you know, it's all about unit economics because this business of hospitality. And was it your own capital at that time? Everything was. So this is the, this is the uh, part where, uh, you know, this you is the You must have sold off everything. Yeah, no, so this is the filmy side to it. So, it. so when I started my business, all my gratuity PF, which was pretty high, I was in a really high salary in 2006, if I, that power parity, it's like crazy. Uh, and I left that all and obviously... That money got into the golf business, made a lot of money in golf. Like those golfing days are good. Golf works happened, burnt it all out. So it came to absolutely zero. But good news, I had bought a home where we were living from 2006, which was at the next price because we could afford it mm. as a salary. A salary is mm. very high. I said, wow, now this is the house that I have. And there's something called LAP, mm. loan against property. Mm. And you know, uh, you know, that sounds good, but it's basically mortgage. And Indian banks will not give you loan against not mortgage. Nothing. So mortgage. You need to have yeah. security. Yeah. So in Hindi, Girvi Karna. Yeah, yeah. That's the filmy story. And that's what happened. We put it up. I still have that note forever. And the funny part is the, the twist of the story is obviously within years, we could get that back. Things happened well. We could get that within two, three years, we could get that mortgage back. And today's mortgage again. But it, it sounds easy today, the yeah. way you're explaining yeah. it. Take back to that moment, right? Because you, know, you had a family, you yeah. had a son. Yeah. Now you have a house. It was 12 years old. And house is a very emotive issue in India. Yeah. It's religion. Yeah, and we come right? from a very, very, let's say, uh, you know, agriculture, orthodox family yeah. from that perspective where we'd seen, obviously, you know. But everybody. how did your wife allow you to do that? We cried. We cried for many days. Mm. Literally. We didn't know what to do. Mm. This was like make or break. And that's where, okay, let's, now the other part to it is that when you do something of that kind, mm. the only home you have, the only place, the only True. asset, True. nothing. And your parents are now moved in with you. True. They retired. Mm. Now they moved to Gurgaon. How sure were you about it? I was... Uh, I was basically, like I said, when you are 
when everything against you got it i think that's where there was no plan b for you so look did be a cafe oh never ever hmm. and and now i have so now what i can tell everyone is that very that you know plan a will never work and that's why there are 26 alphabets because you know plan mm-hmm. a normally doesn't work and obviously in my case also it never worked in the way we thought but at that stage it was very very okay this is the only thing i can do at the age of 42 i'm not going to go and get a job a uh, failed entrepreneur going into a job at the age of 42 i think it's not something you no, know rahul why do you call yourself a failed entrepreneur because uh, because that time i failed because no, everything has burnt out no that's fine i think no, failure that's is learning, learning. Not yeah, today learning. i can say yeah, it's, it's progress learning. so that stage i would yeah. say big failure then elon and, musk must be the biggest failure yeah, on earth and today i say yeah because 99% entrepreneurs yeah. fail yeah the one person which survive are actually half crazy like you said yeah. and they're relentless yeah. so this is one thing i right. learned they're half crazy and they're relentless yeah. but they've tried multiple times they'll continue the point is they've tried 10 things and the 11 must yeah. have worked yeah. yeah and that's absolutely fine absolutely so yeah. that's exactly what it is so i didn't have a plan b for me this is it i knew but let me do it well hmm. the idea was i would do this so well i would do this so well and i would put everything to it and, and you got into nuts and bolts and i've always been a nuts and bolts person hmm. i'm a very detailed and i because being a retailer so now hmm. i'm a retailer turned restaurant here let's got say it. so it's a cafe but let's say you're a restaurant here but i knew that retail is all about detail i'm obsessed with every move you ask me anything in my mm. domain and i'll let you know people uh, it's shocking yeah i know everything i can tell you what the capacity of this air conditioning is where did it come from what is the size i am like obsessed with everything that moves so that is what i believe that it is a detailed business this this business is all about being detailed and could, could it be that's the reason that's your motive as well because that's, you know I, your I unit economics everything. inside I'm out obsessed with numbers Super. and obsessed with everything that moves and mm. and that is the advantage i get because then anybody who works in the mm. team knows that they get inspired mm. they also feel that you know yes here is this person who's ready to roll up his sleeves mm. and he's always there mm. and that is why uh, my business today and i keep telling this to everyone is actually a people's business mm. and that's why our attrition level are one of the lowest one can imagine mm. we're at 1 and 1/2 to 2% attrition which is never heard in the industry and this is you're talking about your staff we are own staff everybody's an, uh, and we don't have that party f- for the simple reason is that is because the person that you are it's both it's, empathy it's both no empathy is important because hospitality is all about yeah. but it's also about saying i will do whatever you do and i will do it with you and i will always be fielding for you mm. and i'm always i have your back mm. and that is what actually makes that and you can ask anybody you know and this this is what my because so from let's say i'm not in the business of beer selling to people i'm in the business of people selling beer that's the only difference we just make people happy that's it. all so, the time so we are in the people business so it's people first hmm. customer so people say customer is king yeah. i would say people are first customer the people could mean anything this no, is one staff member are people the customers are your people. but for me they are important no, if they smile i can believe it you will smile yeah if they are having a good day you will have a good day Rahul, it is it is all energy so it, much of similarity 100% a uh, people driven company so so much else you know because i'm not even doing a product yeah, yeah, what so am right. i doing i have aggregated the product Absolutely. i didn't make it somebody made good beer i have to keep it chill what do i have to do yeah. keep it chill open it smile serve you and True. and 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 give you a good time True. True. so it is a people's business yeah. i'm not in a beer business yeah. at all i i beer you know, is just the product and you know in the management jargon it's called servant leadership yeah and i never knew about this sure. this terminology yeah. i got to know about this about 5 7 years ago but i also pretty much if you have to ask me from a leadership perspective i invest in my people right. who invest in their customers sure so for me they are my customers that's it period yeah and in, even from where i kind of come yeah. from the the attrition is very very low yeah uh, and and i'll give you this the the strangest thing happened covid actually turned and obviously i'm sure there'll be a covid question yes, there will but be. i can actually put it there that the realization of people came in actually during sure. covid so covid came in and we are shut for 6 months it's like funny that bars and schools are the first to absolutely shut and the last to open so we are like similar so, right. so every government whether it's central or state it's sab ko band kar do so we are all closed and down. it's not that you were deep pocket anyway completely no that's the second part when i yeah. again mortgage the same house yeah so deep mortgage got mortgage again okay so the same house be mortgage twice so even the banker says <laughs> there's something wrong with you yeah. so but 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 that say it's for us ka subvention scheme kehte hain so 6 months we shut down and everybody goes home so we tell them to go home because everybody is supposed to go home right so they go home they working there's nothing we can do and we are the wave two wave three but i can tell you one thing that like a large corporate office by then it kind of opened up mm. venture capital funded this that large office i can tell you the entire corporate side of the office or the 70 people all we had nobody was left 
Mm. They all found a job and they got it because I mm. don't blame them. Mm. And the reason for that is because they've got their own for sure. diabetes Absolutely. and stuff and they need to find their own care. But these guys who had gone back, came, came back, back without any, nothing winning. They went home. They were living with their parents mm. in their villages, whatever. They were still getting their, you know, they were getting whatever we could send and what them. Have, what was your scale of operation from 2012, so, let's say, until Yeah, COVID. so we went down. So we had gone up to about, two, in 2020, we had reached about 40 outlets. And then we had to take a cut. We said, okay, when we reopened, we had to find two cities to close. Because right. again, it's infrastructure issues, right? More than that. So we closed Bangalore, we closed Pune. And we closed some in Bombay. And so we realized that, okay, let's be focused on all. We came down to 25. And God's kind, we're at 50 again. Okay. And and now we're just looking at 50 more as hmm. we speak. So hmm. the, the expansion right now is so rapid because the COVID's gone. We've got a new strategic partner in our business and things are really working out. But going back to 2012, when we opened the four outlets, the way we expanded was I didn't know what expansion meant. Hmm. For me, I have seen expansion in Deepak, but I didn't know how to do it. For me, it was, okay, I've got this money. Let me open one store. This will make money. Oh. Then we open. Yeah. But at the golf course, one guy walks up and he says, what do you do? And I said, you know, and he says, okay, this is an interesting idea. Do you want to go with VC money? And I said, 2012, never heard of something mm. called VC. Mm. You know, I never heard. What do you mean VC? True, true, I know, true. don't even know the full form VC. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I only knew one thing. It's your money. Yeah. But at the most, uh, it's bank has given you. Yeah. And banks don't re- uh, dole restaurants. Yeah. There's, there's no yeah, money yeah. for restaurants. And 2012, yeah. again, there were one or two VCs. Yeah, increased in 70, India. 80 yeah. percent interest cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So After mortgaging yeah, your house. Yeah, yeah. That's like, can you imagine? And that was very little of the house property yeah. and whatever. But yes, the VCs came in and I was very lucky. I got two VCs. This is December, I still remember. December uh, and... Uh, December, December of 2012? This is uh, December of 2012. Absolutely, December of 2012. Nine months of the first outlet open. I don't think anybody in the industry has been mm. funded so quickly. And I think it was the same reason. I met these two VCs, the, the honchos in India. Both of them gave me the term sheet the same day. They're both very marquee VCs. And I was like, what? It seems like a carbon copy of each. Like, how can they be so similar? Mm. And that's how I went into it. And that's where I learned something even more, like I said. Because I didn't know about law. I didn't mm. know about SHAs and SSAs. I had no clue. And I learned it so well that today, one of the things I do is I tell people not not what to do, mm, but what, what not to do. to do. And especially on your paperwork. Mm. So I, I invest in a lot of startups. I mentor many startups in yeah. the FNB. Yeah. The only thing I help them a lot mm. is let's look at your paperwork. Let's not sign something which is going to get detrimental for you later on. Because, But the, the KPIs of the VCs, did you manage to... Yes. Uh, yeah. Keep it so together. That was very high pressure. Yeah. Because it was, right? Because they're taking pressure. money. But that's the other advantage. Mm. That high pressure actually allowed, you know, to allowed me to grow. Mm. And we also made a lot of mistakes. We mm. went to cities. We shouldn't have gone early because I think, the, you know, that culture is also about rapid expansion. Boom, 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 boom. Go, go, go. And we went through that whole stage mm. and we went across India. because mm. So, yes, this money came in. Mm. Uh, we got really well funded. We went to a series A, B. And we were about... And largely, was it for growth? It was always for growth. Only growth yeah, capital? We were not burning money at all. Okay. We were very, very... One of the most... So I can even tell you that based on how startups work, that we've been very judicious about our money. We've been extremely frugal. We've done a business of annual business of... Meaning overall business of about five to six times of the total money we've raised. Mm. So it's been very, very good. Mm. And the asset value itself has an underlying value, not just the brand value. The assets itself. This is not burned for... Correct. This is capital expense in... A brick and mortar, which mm. actually, correct, you know, it's like buying a taxi, correct, which is going to give you income. And so, today, when you just without actually delving yeah. into too much mean numbers, yeah. like if you look at one particular cafe, yeah. uh, from the capex cycle, what's the turnover ratio? So our capex is always three x. Uh, our revenue is always three x of our capex. It's three to three and a half, mm. depending on. But three is the bare minimum. Mm. So whatever our capex is three. So what we call ROCE, correct? Uh, it's very high ROCE. So we end up doing ROCE of twelve months. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very nice. If yeah. it's not 12 months, there's something wrong with that outlet. And we will give it time. And if it doesn't work out, mm. we will move out of it. So we we call it like, I, I just call it, it's a very funny statement. I call it the Rowdy Rathor movie. Uh-huh. Bad movie. And you have a choice. So the movie is going bad. You already paid for it. You have a chance in the interval, just walk away. Mm. You already paid true, for it. True. Or you just sit through the movie and go home and you'll have to have a disprint to kind of, you know. Correct. So that's how I look at it. So for me, it is very simple. If it's uh, not working out, yeah, you just walk give it away. time. Yeah, give it whatever it takes. Just move out. That's why most of our assets are not uh, what and, we call these. It's a, it's a yeah. very good thing. Now, this trait yeah. of yours, the ability to walk away, because most people emotionally as well invest in the business, right? Yeah. 
I'm uh, invested in the business. Mostly. I understand. Not invested in the asset. But from a finance yeah. perspective, yeah. you will just walk away yeah. if it doesn't work well no, at all. No, no. And that's the reason when we make a project, mm. we make the project in a way that anything which can move from here can mm. be re Got it. Repurposed. So 44, yeah. 45% is repurposed. Got repurposed. Yeah. That's why I never spend money on the... On the look so and feel and all that. Pretty much is movable. Everything is yeah. can move. We, so most of our money goes into the capex hmm. of equipment. We do not compromise on equipment. Whether it's kitchen, whether it's bar. I want to talk about two segments yeah. in detail. Sure. One segment is about, give us the market insight. Sure. Spirits, yep. uh, beer, yep. how is India consuming, sure. nine cities, sure. ten cities, right? And then we'll move into the fact that, what if, like your son, there are so many others who are looking at you yep. And they want to open up something sure, like this. Sure. And I'm I'm a full promoter of capitalism sure, here in sure. India. Uh, and I think this concept also needs to kind of move ahead. So let's go into the market insights first, yeah. right? What is India consuming and how is India consuming? Yeah. So like I said, volume-wise, about 450 million 9-liter mm. cases for spirits, 400 million cases of Pints or hmm, yeah. case of whether it's pints or quarts, and this is uh, all 750 ml. Uh, no, so so in the liquor is 750 always. Got nine it. liter Got comes it. from 715 to 12 is that. Got it. In the business of beer, it's either there are three cases actually. A case is case, but a case like can a have pint. 330 ml, 24. It. it can be 12 of 650 ml, Got which it. is the quart. Got it. And now the new things has happened which is 500 ml cans, Got which it. actually very good value for money. Got it. It's actually better because technically when you do 500, it's actually nine liters. Yeah. So you're talking about you know, a lot. Yeah. So, so the advantage that you get is, uh, sorry, 12 liters. When you get that, that's a lot of volume you get. So for the same price, mm. almost a little bit of our delta mm. you get. So I tell people, buy cans. It's also more environmental friendly mm. because the cans True. cool quicker. Cans are better at home also. It's got all that. Mm. Coming back to the point. Uh, so the industry in itself is about $60 billion. Mm. Yeah. So it's about 450, 4.5 lakh crores. If I look and at this it. includes this the country liquor as well. This, no, so the country liquor has it's separate. Yeah, separate. Mm. So this is the business which is there uh, on the street price. Got so it. usually the, this the, is, when you're taking stocking the street yeah. price, yeah. this is net of taxes. Yeah. So this so, is pure yeah, uh, so revenue. For example, let's say a beer company sells a pint of beer for 25 rupees, Got hypothetically it. per mm. beer. That's his margin, brewery Got cost, it. making mm. cost. It will actually land up at, at 100 rupees. That's 100 it. in the street. But in that, there will be 35 to 40 rupees of tax. Correct. So uh, so that's a lot of tax. Correct. So that's one tax. Mm. And then there is wholesale margin, retail yeah. margin. Yeah. But on average, you can look at it that in the spirits, you end up paying 65 to 75% of the street price as tax. Got it. In the business of beer, it's about 60 to 65. Got it. So 100 rupees, almost 60, 65 goes in tax. Got it. Uh, that's what you pay. And that's where yeah. Bombay prices are different. Oh, that, that's, prices yeah, different. yeah. So it's, it's crazy. Goa is different. Yeah. Yeah. So is it's different. not states of India, mm. it's countries of Africa. <laughs> yeah, it's countries, not even Europe. It's countries mm. of Africa. Mm. One to another is so like right. chalk and cheese. You can't yeah. even imagine. I, I, as I said, yeah. the pin code is a culture yeah. code. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah. And um, and that's actually the entry barrier too. Mm. If you can learn that and mm. you know how to master it, then itself is also one of the entry barriers. But let's, let's take the beer for instance. Uh, how many million cases did you say? 400 year? million cases. 400 million yes. cases. 400. And I'm... And what's the growth over here? So, so overall, the growth in the last two three years has been uh, very high because of COVID. But usually, beer is growing at about eight percent CAGR. So the way we look at it, is but in the overall scheme of yeah. things, uh, by value and volume. So by volume, it's around 50 50. Yeah, it's value volume uh, volume is 50 50 almost. But by value, and 85 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Yeah. yeah, obviously because yeah. Yeah. Uh, you the have semi premium premium yes. Uh, yes. Uh, spirits. Yes. Uh, when you Put it down from a state perspective. Is there any state which is consuming more beer than yeah, let's say something yeah, else? Yeah. Give us so, insight on so, that. So the so when people look at beer, they always think, okay, North might be drinking and this. Actually, the southern states drink more beers. Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, Odisha uh, would drink more beers than anybody else put together. Leave but the, I believe they also drink more brandy. Let's say Tamil Nadu yeah, drinks more so brandy. Do, Kerala drinks yes, more brandy. Absolutely. So so the proliferation of alcohol, mm. alcohol beverage, whether it's beer or other spirits, it's actually more south and east varying, northeast very high too. That's also to do with meat. So if you look at the meat culture is also there. And in fact, the west and north of India is actually lower on alcohol and lower on even meat. So 400 million cases of beer, yeah. would that also include some guesstimate of the breweries Producing the beers. So the brew. So the. Uh, I'm talking about the individual yeah, breweries. Yeah, yeah. So, so all yeah. put together. So this whatever. So four hundred. So it gets consumed. Okay. Also, because yeah. in India there's nothing called leftover. 
Got it. Because what you produce, you have to I sell it. it. So, and, and you get the data from these breweries for yeah, you yeah. to so, guesstimate yeah, so, so the 400 million all, So, it doesn't come from the breweries. Actually, in India, the, the government of the states, the state government, sorry, control the liquor. So, Correct. there could be three ways of looking at it. One could be that private manufacturing, private wholesale, private retail. Some states do that. Some states, private manufacturing, wholesale uh, uh, government. and So, it depends. Some places, ho, uh, all three, like Tamil Nadu, all three done by the government. Manufacturing, wholesale, retail. It's the only Got state it. where you can't do anything. And you can't have... So, if if you want to sell in Tamil Nadu, yeah. you need to have a factory in Tamil Nadu. Yeah. You can't have a factory in no. Karnataka and sell no. in Tamil no. Nadu. So, then that becomes the state parts. And if you go to Karnataka, you have to sell to the government. Yeah. Like, I'll give you Madhya Pradesh is the stages one, okay? So, Madhya Pradesh has tank-based beer. Yeah. So, this tank will make beer. There are two big tanks. This tank is made for consumption in the state. And this tank can be outside the state. Right. Tank wise, not brewery wise. Who thinks about all this? That's the where, best where, part. <laughs> and so where does this thought process? You cannot imagine. I'm just saying, forget all that. Just give me a simple story. What is legal drinking age? Okay, what is timings? Now, Gurgaon just made the timings of bar at 12. It used to be 2. Between 12 and 2, did anything happen? No. Why are you making it 12? Hmm. Is it that the same human being at 12 becomes like a devil? Hmm. Keep, 12 o'clock, man, I'm a, mm. it's the other way around. You're now making that guy binge drink. It's a, it's a city of Gurgaon. The person is coming out late from work. Want to go home. Traffic is crazy. Want to go and be stressed with friends. And 12 o'clock, he has to like, he can't drink. What will he do? Mm. He'll drink quicker. He'll drink in the car. He'll do whatever he has to do. Mm. Why, why, why do we have these? So, th- that's, I, so sometimes you don't understand the policymakers. Why are they doing things? Why do you have legal drinking age? Of such a variance of 18 to 25. Hmm. And the funny part is there's 18, 21, 25. There's a state with 23, which I can't even get. What do you mean? Now you have 18, 21, 25. Kerala is 23. They just got another new. 23. Right? So it's just crazy. So we go through this, but we lobby and a lot. And we're actually allowing people to break rules any which means. Yeah. And then we blame Indians You're that we break rules. You're criminalizing a child. True. By True? giving all these, you know, British Raj, old school... You know, archaic laws that you're following because you're criminal. You're telling that person that you're criminal from day one. As much as you give us the insights, let's say, of the market, when you look at Gen Z, yeah. um, who is drinking beer? Who is drinking white spirits? Who is drinking brown spirits here today in India? So, look, uh, various uh, cohorts, right? So, brown spirits, good news. The Indian malts have taken over. Obviously, much less in volume. Let's look at... Let's say you're talking about you're the trend talking side. about the Rampurs and yeah. Indian malts have yeah. done more than imported malts. Done. Whether all the glands put together, our Indian malts have done more volume. All right. Yeah. Okay. Already doing 150,000 cases. Crazy. Now, small business, but just shows that today the Indian malts we have are producing age. as yeah. Yeah. as yeah. good yeah. as anybody and else. And Indian malts are beautiful. Hmm. So the malts have come of age, and like you said, which is where is the trend going? Who are consuming? What we've realized is that today, between all the glands put together, we've got more the single Indian malts selling. That's a great, you know, in fact, a lot of people would buy them at duty free and bring them. Today, if you look at it, they're actually buying it off the shelf here, mm. you know, uh, and it's crazy. So that's one side to it. In the white spirits, if I look at it, the gin renaissance, crazy gin renaissance, like unbelievable. The highest kagger is coming in gin. And I, I can bet that the next one is having an agave. We can't call it tequila. For sure. It has to be provenance made so, in Mexico. So do you think this is where the market will expand? It, it, it will. Again. But today maybe growth. the overall, from an overall perspective, maybe sure. 2 or 3%. Sure. Right? Yeah. Vodka and yes. gin combined. Yes. Yeah. 4% yeah. at best. Yeah. So in the white, the gin renaissance moved into the whole Got agave it. part yeah. to it. That's great. Now if I come to the beverages, which is like the mm. alcohol beverage part, not the spirit side. Uh, wine, again. Uh, it's only going to go grow. There's no doubt about it. India is making better wines of, you know, much better than anywhere we've done ever. Hmm. And and those things are helping out. Wines come in a can, which means now it's more younger. True. You know, both the big brew, both, 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 uh, both, both uh, wineries have actually started creating cans now, which is, it's important because that's how you usher in a new culture. Hmm. You can't pronounce grapes. Just call it white, red, bubbly. Yeah, I can. You can't pronounce yeah, the yeah, grapes. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. In the beer world, and that's the world that I have more knowledge than all others uh, in, in terms of the other alcohol beverage, and I look at it that it's a complete change. So people have gone more craft in their mind. Hmm. They're drinking better. Like, you know, is, so is that the transgenerational shift? Complete change. So they say, okay, I'm going to drink. So I'll be more sessional. Okay. In the, let's say, a little years back, you would say, I'm going to get a high. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to do it once in a while. Now I would 
see people who drink every day. Hmm. They'll consume every day. So hmm. That's a sessional drinker. Hmm. That's how the world is. Hmm. I'm going to drink hmm. better. I'm going to drink less. It's as simple. Hmm. But overall, I'll end up drinking more hmm. at a higher value hmm. uh, because I want to try new things. And that is a big change. So hmm. he's not or she's not a person who's just going to say, I'm going to get busted. And that is the reason uh, we've seen this whole new age uh, we are drinking, which people have understood from a lager going into the flavors of hmm. beers. Or let's Got say it. the the no no new beers which people we didn't know ales. We didn't know there's True. an ale and lager. We're a lager country. True. Now we people know ales. Within ales, we now know what's the India pale ale, what's an American ale. But, but the contradiction to that is 80% of the beer is still those strong beers. That's the when you started yeah, off. No, but that's still there. But that's still there. That will remain. That hasn't changed. But that's only getting tighter. I got so it. that 82 will become 80. I got it. I got it. But when I say strong ABV, strong beer, what we're talking about is the more of the, the larger population drinking. Who the wants mass. the big mass. Yeah. I got it. Drunk. But within the I got it. I got the new beers, yeah. Yeah. they're also higher ABV. So there are, there are so higher ABV. So, Talk to me about those nine cities, yeah, yeah. Uh, the food and beverage. 60, 60, yeah, 60, just, just tell us yeah. about that. So we just did a research on this. This came out. It's called the India Food Service Report 2024. We just launched it 10 days back. So India has moved from pre-COVID at 4.2 lakh crores of food service business. What mm. we say is uh, people outside your home food, which Got means it. it could be delivered. Organized sector? Uh, we're talking about the total sector. This total is the total sector. India's food market outside your home. Got it. Uh, whether you deliver it, so it's Got not it. your kitchen. So we are competing with the kitchen basically. Th this really went down during but COVID. But does it include the street vents? It includes everyone. Oh, it includes it. everyone. Got that it. went down in COVID to about Got 2 it. lakh and mm. stuff. Today it's 5.7 lakh crores. Out of the 5.7 lakh crores, 44% is organized. When I say organized, means it has an FSI number. Got it. It has a GST number. Got it. The balance 56 is not organized. This 44% is 2.5 lakh crores. Got it. Yeah. So overall 5.7 lakh crore is 2% of India's GDP. Hmm. So already our industry is providing 2% of India's GDP. But 10% of the employment. We're providing 8.5 million people going up to 10 million people. Super. So that's the largest population. You know, it's just to give you a parlance, it's 33 times bigger than Bollywood. It's two times bigger than hotel. And when you compare it to the IT industry? So, so in India, the largest industry is retail. Yeah. Obviously, it will yeah. always be, right? Yeah. And it's followed by insurance and, and, mm. and retail. Mm. So, it's basically, um, IT actually is much smaller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll be surprised. Yeah. You know, IT… It just takes a lot of sunshine. Correct. Spotlight on it. It's yeah. a sunrise. It's yeah. sunshine. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, everybody takes it. But, so we are the third largest in terms of, let's say, you know, as an industry, when it comes to service. It's also uh, one of the industries which will always be people dependent. So, while you mentioned IT, I have this famous thing that IT will keep replacing people due to all that that's happening in the world. Healthcare and hospitality will never be replaced by by and and I, only your your system. And I'm, going to, and I'm going to tell you one yeah. more thing: education as well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because these are things where you'll have tools to help you. Yeah. But you can't replace a person coming. But I experience can't requires yeah, yeah. It's social. It's absolutely like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's we'll always be high on employment. Absolutely. High on people. And you could have better company. machines, that right? But it's still people. Yeah. I'll have better systems. I'll yeah. have better computers. Yeah. I'll have data, yeah. all that. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's just about people. Yeah. So the people will make that difference yeah and that's going to happen yeah now now coming to that perspective of um uh, you'd mentioned about the size so 5.7 lakh out of which two and a half lakh mm. crores is the organized sector out of this two and a half lakh crores of organized sector it's divided into these sub segments or categories the largest being casual dining Got it. so out of the two and a half half of it is 1.2 lakh crores is casual dining and for the audience what is casual dining? casual dining would mean that uh, the haldi ram or Haldi Rams. So, uh, it'll be a Moti Mahal, it'll be a Punjab, it. it'll be Haldi Rams. It's got something it. where casually you go and... The Rameshwaram Cafe is a casual dining. Yes. Got it. Followed by, it's followed by QSR. Got QSR it. is purely quick service restaurant. Got it. That's the, you know, the mm. surprisingly it's called fast food. Mm. You know, mm. I don't know why it's called fast food, <laughs> but we are called quick service. Uh, the third in it, that... It's the same way Xerox yeah. and photocopy. Yeah, correct, correct. So, so that's, so that's 60,000 mm. 60, crores. Followed by actually our industry. Surprisingly... The pub bar uh, mm. lounges are actually the third mm. after the casual dining followed by QSRs and it's actually our business. So it's pretty large. It's our industry. Which this is not restaurant I, with bars but actual yeah, pubs. Yes, yes, pubs and bars. That's wow. 21,000 crore business in India. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and concentrating in how many cities? Again, across India but overall the entire industry of food service, 60% mm. uh, comes from nine cities. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's quite... And right uh, off your bat, would you know these nine cities apart yeah, from, let's yeah. say, the four metros? So the four metros followed by Pune, followed by Hyderabad, followed by uh, Jaipur, 
So uh, so yeah, I got it. That's it. Yeah. These are the nine cities which are contributing. Sixty percent of our business. Sixty percent organized business. So two and a half lakh crore. Sixty percent of two and a half lakh crore is from those nine cities. So when I say when we're looking at people who want to be in this industry, I would say start with where you are. It's a it's, a, it's an industry to start with, and then you keep right? expanding. It, I'm just looking at here. India is in that ascending yeah, economy. Yeah. Three four trillion yeah. any time, going up to ten trillion. Let's say ten fifteen. Every trillion, hundred million population goes from wherever they are to the next level, middle class to a little yeah. higher middle class, higher middle class to maybe. I think there's so much of potential yeah. in every segment here. It'll be our segment twenty you, million. You, more you should people. be twenty thousand yeah. in the next fifteen twenty yeah, years. So, that, so 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 twenty million people get added to legal drinking age there every year. Yeah. And and plus the fact that when when more disposable income comes, right, more educated people, yeah. right, in the next fifteen years, I think the landscape is going to be completely different. That's what's happening. So if somebody says, "Give me a number," and we like we want to cross the hundred number, and we are anyway the largest, let's say, not just beer but and bar chain, which is also strange because it is so fragmented, and everybody runs their own little ship in their own little town. And you know, the, while we have fifteen thousand on-premise, uh, you know, bars or let's say licenses in India. We are the largest by we're not even crossing the hundred. It's really mm. strange, you know. Mm. But I just look at this that this number of fifteen thousand will only go up to twenty five, thirty thousand. We want to be thousand of them. Why can't we? Because there are places in the world which have three to four to five thousand. Uh, but consolidated under one under company. Under one company. Yeah. Yes. Oh, there have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. there are many companies in the world. So they're in Japan, they're in Europe, they're in UK, in the US also. So there are companies which are above thousand. And I'll give you another fact here. So, so in Shanghai, just recently, the thousandth Starbucks opened. Mm. I'm not talking China. Mm. The thousandth in Shanghai opened recently. Mm. It's a tea drinking yeah. nation, supposedly. And I believe there is this another uh, cafe chain, uh, coffee chain in uh, China called the Lucking Cafe. Yeah, Lucking Cafe. So that became like the pretty quick much quick service. The yeah, party. like a quick service. Yeah, that was like the biggest. Uh, they case opened study. four thousand yeah, in six a, months. Yeah, that was a case study. Yes. Yeah, and it's got its own issues right now. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But four thousand. Yeah. Look at the yeah. scale yeah. Yeah. in which they are kind of doing. Do you think we'll ever reach there? Everything is possible. So we already, you know, uh, Dominus just recently opened yeah. the two thousand. It takes that while. It's a, it's a good news. So if I look at just Dominus itself, okay, first ten years didn't even cross hundred. Boom! It goes. So I think it's that what we call that number. We always call it. It's that zero to one, so and then right. one to hundred, yeah, and then yeah. hundred. I think the pace of that yeah. is going to be rapid. So if yeah. somebody tells me it took you ten years, and I would say ten because I'm just taking off two years of COVID, so I I wiped it off. That's why I say I'm much two years younger because of COVID yeah. are like those buzzy days, buzzy years that you don't want to talk about. So we've been in the business for twelve years, but let's say ten years of real business. It took us fifty ten years to reach fifty. I would do another fifty in one year. And I would go from hundred to thousand actually in five years. Wow! Tell me something. So it's could, possible. So that's what's happening. With could everyone. it also be? And I'll I'll draw an analogy. Yeah. Let's say with uh, motorcycles ten years ago, yeah. uh, Hero Honda would open up a distributor. Oh, sorry, an outlet uh, 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 would sell in a particular sure. let's say uh, pin code yeah. district. A year later, Maruti would kind of come in. A year later, Hyundai yeah. would kind of come in. So in your case, would yeah. it be like let's say Domino's comes in? Yeah. And now you have people eating pizzas, sure. and then you have the costas sure. coming in, sure. and then you have the that's what McDonald's did. So McDonald's, as you know, is mm. a burger company. Mm. They can't even make that money in that burger. It's actually a real estate company. Mm. That's what they've done in the U.S. So they would go and find these places, make these big boxes, and then everybody else will come in. Mm. Now in India, the biggest paradox. So we have two paradox in India, which is my favorite paradox. First paradox is that we have first world rent with third world sales. So our rents, like when we say Khan Market, and so all right, yeah. Tokyo. Yeah, yeah. You can never Avenue, make money. Yeah. Yeah. But but the sales are not even. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Company. So that's the biggest problem yeah. because we don't have quality space. And yeah. the reason for that is the government's also not done enough for it. Yeah. Uh, we've been always talking about why doesn't the government free up land for F and B? It is an employment generator. Mm. It gives you votes. It gives you everything. It gives mm. you taxes. Gives you local. One of the things about our industry is very localized with employment. Yeah. yeah. I can't have a guy shipping from here to Bangalore. And you don't require that kind of skills no, as well. No, I my can't. Guy can't even go to Delhi. Mm. Yeah. If Haryana wants more employment, I will give you employment here. Yeah, My guy doesn't go yeah, out. Yeah. He's not going to go to Bangalore. No, all I'm trying to say is, if you get into a manufacturing, you, there's still a process of training the person. This is this? the quickest. Yeah. It is one day. We go like that. We go live, and it is basically what we call marginalizing this entire. So I can have the entire variety from a guy who's cleaning the floor 
to the general manager yeah. in one go. This is this is amazing the way the industry in terms of and this is, is just my particular take Rahul. I think the government for the last ten years have taken big bold decisions. They have for employment, right? for, yeah. for employment, yeah. from policy, yeah. finance policy, yeah. fiscal policy, yeah. monetary yeah. policy, infrastructure otherwise, infrastructure yeah. policy. Yeah. I think the next five years, especially when we are going from four to let's say five and a half, six trillion, we will see the largest uh, jump in policies. It is happening already right? to facilitate yeah. five to ten. Yeah. You know, it's to facilitate happen. that 5 it, to 10. This is the golden decade. This yeah. is the 10 years. Anybody and everybody, this is the this is the 10 years. And I'm talking about every strata. Like, this is the time when India will shine to another level. And uh, like, if your son wants to get into this business, not be your cafe. And like your son, there are so many others. Yeah. Uh, for the simple reason, uh, because it's a free capitalistic country, sure. somebody wants to get into IT, somebody wants to get into FNB, somebody wants to get into, let's say, some other kind of a business. What would you tell them? So, what so, is your advice for them? So, I'll give you hospitality first. Yeah. Like that's yeah. something that I would do, which is part of this. Let's say the food service industry, and I would say, you know, one of all, you have to have passion. You're, it is it is ruthless, uh, while it seems glamorous. So, do not do it as a side hustle. Don't do it as a side business because the moment you work. You put the prefix of side, it'll become side only. True. So please don't do it. Just don't do it. So a lot of people come to say, you know, I've got this, I've got that. I just don't. Please don't. Just go and spend that money in a good resort and get all the service. But rather than don't get into it. So that's one. The other is that if you're doing it, obviously you have to have passion for it. You should know that this is the longest working hours. You'll be working on weekends when everybody's enjoying themselves. It is thankless to the point that you have to always be serving. Things will go wrong. It's very hyper local, dynamic in nature. Things go real time. But eventually, it is gratifying. The best part is the validation, the True. gratification. You get instant gratification. You will know if you've served somebody that aura of that person who's happy. You're gonna get that happiness very quickly. So I think I believe in that part to it. But again, coming from this entrepreneur who wants to enter our industry, and I would say, you know, be absolutely relentless because it's gonna be like that. The other part is that. You have to really go into your unit economy. You Correct. open the first one. Passion is not going to pay your bills. Yeah, it, it needs to be financially and also viable. know the law of the land because that's yeah, extremely important. That's all part of that game. Yeah. And and that you open the first one. Tread carefully. Don't jump into the pool. You don't even know the depth of the pool. Okay, come on. Put your toes in. Get a little feet wet. Go step. Go step by step, and then make it into a larger enterprise if you want to. Hmm. Otherwise, you can even run one outlet hmm. and you can be happy with it. There's nothing hmm. wrong with it. There are hmm. so many people from industry which run beautiful cafes, beautiful cakeries, beautiful, and they're okay hmm. with that. So it's True. up to them what they want. But I would advise people that please get your your numbers right. You know, be very, very, uh, you know, because this might seem like a free cash flow business. Actually, to even get a single digit EBITDA is not easy. Hmm. You know, it, a lot of people say, oh, you sell this much for so much. Why like that? Because it's a, it's a high gross There's money. a lot of costs in India. So mm -hmm. apart from the cost of goods, because the material mm -hmm. costs are only going up, we have the highest, like I said, paradox of two things. We, licenses, are higher, yeah. licenses are higher. Licenses are higher. Utility costs are higher. The other paradox in India is, while you keep saying that we have the largest amount of people and we've got so much skill, when you actually want to hire, you don't find them. So while you have the most abundant amount of people, you actually have a trouble. And that's the reason we go into these programs where we are looking at. So we would never, we would go and hire from the market or find people. We now gone into management training programs. So last year onwards, 50 came in this year, now 50. We're going to the hospitality institutes. And that's where I wanted to, you know, take your help, where we want to get into this next level of leaders. Hmm. And the idea here is get these people in. They were all going to the hotels. And I'm being very frank about it. Hotels are easier for sure. fit for them. Yeah. To come to this high energy place. Hmm. It's high energy, high performance. But high performance will give you high rewards. In a mm. hotel, you might go like that. Here, you could go like that. You know, be a, be like a semi-entrepreneur yeah. without putting your money. And I think they are doing so fantastic. The first year is over. They've all become managers. Brilliant. And I, Brilliant. is the commensuration, sorry, the remuneration, much, does it commensurate? Much, much, much better than hotels. Much <coughs> better. This aspect needs to be, I would say, spoken about. Yeah, because we just did it yeah. first time yeah. and that's why now I'm going to yeah. reach out to all the And places. this is the only way, uh, Rahul, if I have to give you some advice, you'll be able to scale up your, uh, I would say, quality operations. That's the only way yeah. because we, we have the right people yeah. and the right uh, Absolutely. You know, people we serve. But because I you're in the now, people's business as you write Now we have to get the quality yeah. notch yeah. up. The good part about you is uh, your churn ratio is very low. Yeah. That means you are retaining people. Yes. 
I, I just needed to come to that question. So what is that culture which is allowing you, the churn ratio, to be very low? That means people are here, people come to the beer cafe and they're not leaving you. So I think first and foremost, it's it flows from the top that I am here to run an enterprise. Mm. This is not my, you know, it's not my, let's say, it's not my frivolous. I'm not running up because most bars are frivolous in their own nature, right? When you go to a hotel, True. why do you join a hotel? Because you go to the hotel, you come from a, a point that, okay, this is from a group, which is large because these people need a couple of things. They need to work with a company which gives them equal amount of, you know, uh, status, like they're part of the industry. They, the other is they want... Uh, to be associated with a brand, to no be a beer, about beer cafe is a brand. When, when you do that, yeah. but there's other little things apart from the remuneration. The or social the aspect. There is one thing which I didn't realize when I when mm. we talk to them because we do a lot of and we do anonymous. Okay, mm. so we do you can do anonymous. Talk about it. Ninety-seven percent satisfaction index anonymous. Anonymous means you. Yeah, just yeah, yeah I get it. You can you can just about say yeah. Ninety-seven percent happiness index. Now that's not easy. And when we look at this and we look at it, what is that moving? Very few things, very mm. funny things. Okay, it's not got to do with really mm. your mm. salary and very. Mm -hmm. It's about am I getting medical? Am I getting my ESI? The, here? the social. Am aspect, I getting right? my salary on my app? Or meaning, am I getting it? I am with you. These are things which you are know, very funny. Five, I, five been, to eight lakhs. Yeah. Sorry, Rahul. Yeah. Anyone who is between five and ten and twelve lakhs, for them this is extremely, yeah. extremely yeah. important yeah. because the background oh. they're coming from, aged parents, yeah. may, parents who need medical yeah. attention. You All know? that working yeah. hours. Yeah. Uh, working hours, we do our shifts very well. Most of the restaurants will cut the shift, they'll do all, they'll pay you in cash, they'll no record. Everything is fully, fully recorded. They're in and out, are everything is like complete. Your leaves are there, it's all on. And, and does this manifest from again going back the family background that you come from and your own corporate culture that you bought? That in? I had to bring the corporate culture, yeah. but corporate culture to still be they I got it. be the upstart, yeah. be that hunger in that. Corporate culture is not make it slow, but make a process. And also, let's go back to 2012 quickly. Yeah. You bought in VC money and then later on you got your strategic investor, mm -hmm. which essentially means clean books. Yeah, the list is not easy, yeah. which means that oh, I went from series A to B. Yeah. My C was about to happen. My mm. diligence is over. Mm. And I'm talking about uh, my my years 2012 <laughs> till the time COVID hit. Deloitte doing audit. Yeah. This is we're not talking. Yeah. We're talking about big four. Doing audit, you need to have Absolutely. all your process clean. Completely. Otherwise, there's Completely. no way. Yeah. We have Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And these are again little nuggets of wisdom, which I have yeah. found. Never have cash in the business. Never, ever. So be absolutely straight line. Not even have a salary in cash. Everything has to be accounted for. Third, outsource your accounts. My, outs my accounts are outsourced. Do you know mm. that? Let it be a third party doing yeah. it. It's just yeah. bookkeeping. Yeah. Let them report to absolutely. everybody at the same yeah. time as yeah. me. Yeah. So we've kept things which I've never done. Never mm. have a related party transaction. Yeah. I don't have a single. My my own brother would sell me a thing at half the price. I'll still not buy it. And because it'll come back biting me. And later. Just for disclosure yeah. purposes, nobody would sit on the board either. No, 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 no way. So it's a very professional no, run. Completely professional. We don't want to do it. Super. It'll, it'll, so these are again I learn from people. And yeah. every time you meet, so this is again somebody gave me. Yeah. He was the partner at Deloitte when he gave me these things. And I respect every time I meet him, I tell him, you know, mm. you told me three things. He said, man, you remember? Yeah. I said, no, yeah. I don't remember. It's ingrained. You told me these three things and I'm... So even with Indian School yeah. of Hospitality, when we yeah. started off in 2017, we had EY as our auditor. Zero so, revenue, so, yeah. but EY Same as the auditor. Thing. Exactly. That's yeah. what it should be. Because that's how you create yeah. trust. an enterprise. And yeah. trust. It costs you. Uh, it, it does. Yeah. But that cost is equal to brand trust. Yeah. Yeah. Outside investors yeah. looking at you. Yeah. Other stakeholders yeah. kind of looking at you. So I have, I have a very funny statement again here, but I keep telling this. I said, this is the price you pay yeah. so that you can pay any price later. Yeah, so right. That's so right. Absolutely it. right. We've come to the last segment. All right. What are the future plans? And I'll tell you in the context, yeah. you have you have a son who's into private equity, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, and you have this fledgling. Sure. You are growing to go sure. from 50 to, God bless to you. Thousand, yeah. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand, two thousand. Where it's all going to be? So, so both sides to it. So, the personal side and the business side. Business side, we will continue to grow. It is the country to be in. It's the best place to be in. When you created a brand, you need to kind of, you know, do that. So, I have this again. I have this. Uh, I use a lot of acronyms. Okay, so I use something called RSS, and this is not political ideology. This RSS stands for your business has to be replicable. It has to be scalable. A lot of people have replicability and scalability. Mm. There's one thing that they left out, which is called sustainability. Correct. So we follow the RSS model. Sustainability is very important. Every outlet has to make money. The corporate has to got make it. money. I got it. Money. It, it, we are in commerce, yeah. right? It's business. So that's one part of it. So this will continue happening. I have a lot of 
लेट से एनर्जी लेफ्ट एंड विल कंटिन्यू आई एम वेरी एनर्जेटिक आई माई फेवरेट वर्ड और थकना मना है एंड आई कंटिन्यू डूइंग दैट एंड कीप मोटिवेट दैट्स ऑन दैट साइड टू इट ऑन द फैमिली साइड टू माई सन वॉन्ट्स टू बी इन दिस द आइडिया हेयर इज टू इन पावर इनेबल फार मोर स्टार्टअप इन इंडिया बिकॉज दिस इज द कंट्री वेर स्टार्टअप इन एंड स्पेशली द इंडस्ट्री वी नो इफ समबडी टेल मी कैन यू go and invest in rocket science i would not be able to. i don't understand that right but i understand my side of the bit and that's where he will come in he's had a hospitality stint he's done that and that's as a as as a family office or a family he will continue doing that which means enabling more people my knowledge my experience his expertise in the finance side hmm. i think is going to just make it bigger hmm. so that's that's what we want to do more than that uh, the way i look at things are that every day gives me so much gratification so much validation when people come in somebody says oh there's sweets for you what happened i just got a motorcycle oh here yeah, i just had a child those are priceless moments and i continue doing that so the more i live those the better i get and do you think you have enough juice in you for the next 20 years i don't know how many years but, but definitely is there because the way i look at it a lot of people call no, it all giving back as in you know that it's all giving back yeah. so i will continue doing it i'll create impacts these are all fancy words but i will definitely keep inspiring one thing i want to do which is my own and and that's what my family believes that you should be good at and i need your help in that i want to be an educator one day i want to be part of this whole mm-hmm. education part because one is that i have gotten so much love from this industry i became a you president of the association yeah. i am a trustee yeah. of this i am a outsider who became the president within 6 years of being in the industry there must be something which people kind of looked yeah. at me i want to continue doing that inspire people but be an educator i want to come to institutes and and actually give yeah. my side because when my son was in when when in college he would have the best classes were actually not just the professors were there were actually the visiting faculties or people who done stuff True. those those wisdom is like beyond book knowledge you know so, i want to continue doing that yeah so a you're yeah. most welcome always please. at indian school i want to do that please yeah. but uh, let me kind of give you maybe a a, a nugget wisdom on that uh, two kind of education happens one is let's say you teach a class yeah a person like you rahul which with that kind of a network uh, experience in, what india requires is another i'm just indexing the number sure. right this number could be multifold let's say 100000 entrepreneurs each year who will create 500000 jobs that's right so your job is that 100000 exactly. if you can yeah. influence them yeah. right whether that the institutional level at incubator yeah. level at other yeah. uh, 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 resource level Absolutely. that would be really kind no, but of that that's one yeah. of the reasons also we realize yeah. that as, yes. as as me as a person in man we want to be job creators you know i'm not saying that everybody will also have a job but there are some people who are privileged who've yeah. been blessed that we can be creators you just don't have to be a career ladder can you be the ladder correct so i want to be the ladder that's it so you know what we have actually come to the, the absolutely the last segment Super. now I am just going over here, yeah. and I'm going to put you in a spot now. Perhaps so God bless you. All right, this will be recorded, uh, and it, the day you decide to retire, and all of us will go to our heavenly abode. Yeah. Some of this will be read on your eulogy as well. Hopefully, fond memories, Reebok years. What fond? is that fond memory during your Reebok years? The gymming every day. Fond memories when you were broke. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I think I'm losing out. No, no, just kind of yeah. I, I think I don't. Sorry, okay, sorry. One second. We'll we'll, we'll we'll do the whole thing again. Okay, okay. Sorry, because there was uh, noise in the black. Fond memories, Reebok years. Uh, gymming every day. Fond memories when you were broke. You didn't have money. Crying the night. Fond memories growing up years in Rajasthan. Heritage and a sense of privilege. Hidden talent or skill that no one knows about. I ah, that's crazy. So I mean, everybody knows about it. So there's nothing hidden right now. Yeah, but but largely to the world, they don't know. Maybe your friend circle know about it. But would it be what scuba diving? What is it? Those are all hobbies. So, hobbies. But yeah. Yes. Uh, what would be that hidden talent? I research a lot. So I meaning I love to research uh, companies' balance sheets. I go. I love the RHPs of companies which are listing. Got it. I'm a deep researcher of data. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Is there An unexpected collection that you have, you know, uh, single malls, yeah. Or oh, you love yeah, the you single malls? I have a very large collection. Collection of single malls. Yeah. What's your guilty pleasure? Biking. Yeah. And what kind of bikes do you have? So at the moment, there's a, a Harley Fat Boy. Fantastic. 
is there any secret ambition left apart from teaching? Not ambition, but there's a lot because I'm an admiral junkie. Uh, between, you know, we love to do adventure sports. So there's a lot still left. Like uh, we've done 12,000 feet jump. There is an 18,000 feet jump left. There could be a lot. So everything to do with, let's say, adventure. That's something so that that's, that's something which yeah, you will. Yeah, I'll continue. I'll, I just want to keep jumping from places. Yeah. Any unusual habit that you have? Uh, I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> which you do, yeah. like me. Yeah. Uh, where did you get the most unusual, I would say, source of inspiration? You never expected it, but you, you were inspired or someone spoke to you uh, and you were really inspired. So, unusual would not be because um, it's usually usual because you meet people, you okay. get inspired, you spend But you, you went into a place, you never expected that, but you came out. Do you remember anything? Unusual, okay. So, mostly usual, but I would say... Unusual, again, very tough, but one of the unusual, so it's again, it's something that was predictable, but a lot of inspiration came, comes, or has many times come again and again from the Oktoberfest that happens in Munich, because it. it just tells you that people are so happy with beer. Yeah. And that ins inspires that, you know, they're obsessed with beer when it comes to it, and that happens every year. It's the world's largest festival. So it's kind of not unusual, but for me, it was unusual because I didn't expect that nature and that size. It's, it's phenomenal. If I have to put you on a spot, yeah. which is your favorite beer? So, I, so the style of beers I like is is a Belgian triple style. So right. anything which is so it's either a Belgian triple style or a double IPA. These are the styles. They're they're heavy. So on for the, the audience, can you explain what is a triple style? So the triple style would means that this particular beer is uh, it's again barley based. It's hundred percent barley based. But what it does is it's matured much more. It's got higher ABV. And, and a double IPA means that it's an IPA. IPA means an Indian pale ale, but it's got double hopped, so it's higher on hop. So anything which is far more flavorful, uh, meaning if I have to have an easy drinking beer lager, everybody does that. But I prefer because I'm not drinking too much. I'm drinking in session. I drink something which is high on flavor. Yeah. So these beers are there. Yeah. Alcohol is something we don't talk about, yeah. Rahul. If if you had to give advice about responsible drinking, right? Uh, and assume this particular aspect of the next 30 seconds is shown to the nation. Sure. What would you tell me? So, so it all starts from within, right? Uh, what am I drinking for? Am I drinking to de-stress? Am I drinking for socializing? What am I drinking for? Am I drinking to get high? Or is the spirit making me high? It, it all depends on your mindset. It's a mindset game. So if our mindset says that I am a responsible in drinking, I'm not going to drink and drive. I'll get an Uber, I'll get a car, whatever. That is what it all starts from within. So the more we educate around it, it's not about just blatant advertising saying drink responsibly. It's about the mindset. It's the cultural change that we all have to bring in. And this cultural change is there in the world. Hmm. If this phenomenon is there in the world, it's not that it's not there. It's just that we have to imbibe it. That's it. It all starts from within. Thank you so yeah. much, Rahul. Thank you so much. Uh, you, Rahul. But before we wrap up, yeah. and this is for our audiences, um, what you will kind of get from this episode is into the mind of a corporate trend entrepreneur. Yep. But most importantly, he has built a company of culture. Yeah. And if I had to layer on top of that, they always say quality is not scalable. But I can reaffirm the fact that quality can be scalable if you have the right systems, the right process. But more importantly, like Rahul, your skin, your teeth, every aspect of your being and your DNA is within the system. And to complement what Rahul said about responsible drinking, I would only say this. It's a mindset. If you have to drink, I am sure you are old enough to do that. But please do not drink and drive. Take an Uber. Take uh, uh, the assistance of maybe an assisted driver. Whatever works for you. Take a rickshaw, walk it down. But please ensure you remain safe. Rahul, thank, thank you, Rahul. you so much for your time thank today. You so much. It was thank such you. a pleasure. This was definitely an honor to be with you. But more important, I think to share for such a long time, we've been on this, but I think sharing this has been really And good. India requires authentic role models. Thank you so much. Rahul. Right? You are one of them. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.